Also on the same day during this ceremony, the masons would pair off with the little boys and me, go to different rooms like behind the main altar in the back building and be raped and abused. My uncle, who was also there, he was the one who took me into a room and raped me. Um, that was pretty normal, yeah. Early on in, in my research, when people were coming forward with accounts, um, some accounts appeared about about deviant Free, Freemasons. That is to say, some of the people making al um, allegations were indicating that their, their fathers had been Freemasons and that somehow uh, their alleged uh, abuse they thought was connected with with the Lodge or, or, or Freemasons, occasionally abuse accounts, uh, if they were true, and uh, I can't say that, that they were definitively, but if they were true, seem to have occurred inside Masonic Lodges. I would remember first the incest stuff, the, the stuff at home, and then it would gradually go from that to the ritual stuff. I went to a couple of Masonic parties at a lodge that was located right near the research building. There was a Masonic lodge right, right around the corner from it, and they sent me to a couple of parties there. And these people just, they go crazy at these parties. These men, they just get drunk and, you know, they just pass you around and it, it's horrible what they do. Was it uh, um, sexual abuse that was going on or other kinds of abuse? Of these artists? Yes. Um, they'd make you perform sexually. They'd make you, um, they'd, um, they'd make you watch other people perform. I mean, they would have everything you can imagine, e even bringing in the animals. And you had to watch, which is it's just as bad as having it done to yourself. Sometimes watching is just as worse. I mean, just as bad. Watching it being done to other people. children? Or yeah, especially if it's people younger than yourself. You're a child, and you have to stand there and watch a little kid, a little kid who's half your age being tortured or raped or whatever. I mean, that's just as bad as having it done to yourself. I interviewed a reputable psychologist in Australia who has worked with survivors over a 20-year period. She has seen approximately 20 clients who say they have been ritually abused and mind controlled. Out of those 20 survivors, two of them have allegedly been abused by Freemasons. My grandfather was a 33rd degree Mason who belonged to several Masonic lodges. He and my grandmother founded a chapter of the Order of the Eastern Star in the suburbs of Sydney. I have been in therapy for 20 years now. 16 with my present therapist. I consider myself lucky because my family moved 
from the east coast to the west coast of Australia when I was nine. And as a result, the ritual abuse by cult members stopped. Other types of abuse continued, but being taken in the middle of the night to attend rituals stopped. My sister, who is seven years older than me, also has memories of ritual abuse. One day when I was 26, she asked me if I remembered the underground chambers. I replied yes. She then asked if I remembered the children crying. I said no, but I know they were there in the other rooms. I also consider myself lucky because 17 years ago, when I confronted my mother and father with the ritual abuse, my mother said she was not involved with that. But here is the suitcase of your grandfather's Masonic paraphernalia. She has apologised for not being a good mother to me. I think this is the closest acknowledgement of the abuse I will get. This suitcase has confirmed so much for me. It has copies of passwords, hand signals and ritual information for the Freemasons, along with aprons, jewels and medals that my grandfather and grandmother wore at meetings. I remember being in cages, electric shocks, being cut, raped, photographed, drugged, hypnotised, starved, light deprived, beaten, oxygen deprived and sleep deprived. I have been put in coffins with spiders. I have participated in rituals inside halls and in outside bush settings. I have been tied to altars. I have participated in mock births and deaths. I remember trap doors in halls and have been taken numerous times in the middle of the night to attend rituals. The colour programming I went through took place in underground chambers. Each room had a different colour and different programming was perpetrated in them. Colours seemed to correspond with the points of the Eastern Star. Blue, yellow, white, green, red and black in the middle. Um. Initially, it was, um, and personal descriptions of having gone through cult ritual abuse. And then we began to realize that a great percent of the survivors had also been involved in Masonic cult ritual abuse. Their father, father, grandfathers were Masons or Shriners. Again, in different parts of the country. And we started looking a lot more closely at that because it seemed to be a common thread. Uh, there were private conversations about it that went on at the gathering. I put a, a few small advertisements in the Globe and Mail, notifications about the upcoming conferences, and just the three or four words uh, describing it, the, the Masonic connection generated phone calls and letters from survivors across Canada who described themselves as being Masonic survivors living in terror. And they were invariably the daughters of Masons or Scottish Rite Shriners, the daughters of Masons. And the, they began describing, again from all across Canada, memories of what, um, what could only be described as mind control experimentation. So both your father and your uncle were part of the Freemasons organization mm -hmm. and they would supply you to other members of the Freemasons mm -hmm. who would abuse you and force you to participate in, in rituals which included the murder of a child. Mm. Yeah. I would like to say that again this is something that's not unusual in these ritual groups. They use these methods specifically to confuse, disorientate and split children other types of abuse would be simply just being in bed, taken, taken from my home, taken out of bed, raped. It could be any time, any time of the night. It, it could be with people I knew or did not know. Did you feel that um, specifically the um, uh, the, the Masonic uh, context had anything to do with the ritual itself? Was there Masonic elements to the rituals? Ritual abuse? I don't necessarily feel that there was. Um, 
I feel that birds of a feather flock together. I feel that his cohorts in his fraternal organization uh, as part of, uh, of their joining in an abuse of me were because they were all pedophiles, simply pedophiles, um, regardless if they were practicing Satanists, regardless if they were a member of a fraternal organization, regardless if they were a Boy Scout leader, regardless if they were a community uh, figure, regardless if they worked for state government, regardless if they worked for federal government. What is indicative to me underneath all of this is the fact that these are persons that commit crimes against children of the most hideous nature, crimes that are sadistically violent. I think that he and others attempted not only to sadistically abuse me, but to split my mind, to split my mind into as many pieces, to split my personality. As a matter of fact, my sister remembered my father calling me by other names. She wondered why was she being called by these other names. He definitely knew of my alter personality.